Juna Barnes. Madame Grows Older, a journal at the dangerous age. September 7th. I must face the fact that I am no longer a young woman. Nevertheless, I am starved. I am starved for youth. There must be, I tell myself, new worlds to conquer. There simply must be. It's only right. When I was a child and had curls down my back, I realized that it was horrible to be a child. Now that I am a matron, I realize that it's horrible to be a matron. But I must not admit it even to myself. I am so volatile. September 9th. I have been all around the border of my lake. Leaning down, I drew ever so many water lilies to me, crushing them against my heart. But my better nature beat me let them go. Then I gathered a handful of gravel and started tossing it at the goldfish until it dawned upon me that I was satisfying an impulse to cruelty in a small way. Now I am resting under the sundial, trying to calm my riotous nerves. As I sit, I toy with a fallen maple leaf. Life and the seasons are so implacable, aren't they? They are here today and gone tomorrow. It's so splendid and heartless. My God, as I sit here, I realize that I am perishable. Oh, if that brute of an Einstein had only taken a fancy to my relativity, September 11th. Today, I went driving. I got down at the park and went among those strangely innocent children one always sees in parks, pulling the swans about their tails, sticking pins into the fish, and sitting on dogs. I sat a long time by the dark pond, watching my reflection in the water, thinking on the inhumanity of man. I was about to re-enter my carriage, still thinking it, when my attention was attracted by a very young man. He could not have been over twenty-five. He had that peculiar dazed expression seen on the faces of immigrants who have been stunned in a foreign country. He might have been a Russian, a Swede, a Paul, an Italian, a Frenchman. He might have been anything. I did not know. I got hurriedly into my carriage and directing the coachman to the Shelburne for tea, kept my eyes firmly fixed on the middle of his back. September 12th. Today, I returned to the park. Alice, I said, be vibrant. You're still young. You love life. A woman is as young as she looks, a man as young as he feels. Alice, I said, be a man, pull yourself together. You still pulse with the eternal scheme of things. You know 
you do? But my pulse tires me. September 13th. I cannot leave the park alone. I have become passionately attached to it. I sit by the pond, and my thoughts revert to the young man of a day or two back. He was so manly, and the perfect gentleman, so experienced without having learned anything, so tender and yet so racial. I must meet him socially. September 14th. He is sitting on the bench just opposite. He's reading something. Is it Latish, Finnish, Swedish? How beautiful is uncertainty. September 15th. All is well. My brother, Alex, happened to know the young man. He had no sooner set eyes on him than he exclaimed, As I leave, bring Devil Jones! Imagine my delight. Bring Devil Jones! The name is alive with possibilities. September 18th. I have made a perfectly ghastly discovery. Oh, I can write it. It has sent me to bed where I now lie writing it. <laughs> the ink has dried on my pen for the hundredth time. I cannot put pen to paper. I am wrapped up in arnica, and my head is done up in towels. <laughs> Near at hand are the smelling salts, the social register, and a guide to Monte Carlo. I am not myself. I light cigarette after cigarette, and cast them all in that space outside my window that I used to call nature. Now I will not recognize nature. I have turned the lights off and on twenty times, trying to calm myself. In vain, I am a moral and physical menace to human nature. This is it. I am in love with Prendeville Jones. I. A woman of forty. No once again the anguish of spring, the torture of love. I sleep badly. I scorn food. And now I know what I must do. I don't want you. I don't want passion. I want those dear dead days that I used to spend thinking of my lost youth, imagining I wanted it back. I long for rest and non-eventful forties. I tell you, I want to be untroubled once more. This is what I am going to do. At midnight. On the hour, I shall dress myself in my lace dressing gown and taking the paper weight with the picture of St. George driving out the dragons on the reverse side. I shall go down through the tall grasses as a matron should who is encased in her implacable years. And there, at the pond's edge, cast myself in. No one shall know that I blossomed again at the age of discretion, for I cannot bear the return of youth 
It's too much. I'm too tired. Oh, I shall kill myself. September 19th. I have killed myself.